to reflect some thoughts on the induction program and particularly I am very pleased today to introduce to you Professor P.P. Chakravarti, our director. In this regard, uh, a few sh uh, thoughts about him I would like to share. He is an alumnus here from the 1985 batch and uh, B.Tech in computer science. And after that, he went on to do his PhD in the area of computer science with artificial intelligence and many of the uh, other areas of VLSI, which are the engaging the industry and academic interface. As the head of the Advanced Technology Development Center, he has steered many programs and outreach activities. Also, he has participated in a lot of technology outreach and development. Uh, notable among them are the General Motors IIT Kharagpur Collaborative Research Laboratory on Electronics, Controls and Software. The, he has also pioneered the incubation program at IIT Kharagpur, which has taken a lot of good uh, leads going forward. From the point of view of research, I may mention some of the areas, though I'm not a person of computer science, but uh, I can tell you some of the research methods has been a long-standing problem that he has uh, solved, and that has been a great contribution from his end. He has published widely in a, lo in a lot of international journals, and he has patents to his credit. Besides the uh, work that he has done with respect to uh, his research areas, he's also contributed a lot to the activities in terms of research in the institutes in the area of computer science and uh, engineering. He has also obtained the highest industry support for the institution in terms of projects and successfully led and completed those projects. He has also uh, actively participated and also steered some of the activities in the uh, highly valued international projects and some of them I would like to mention. Volkswagen Foundation, Intel Corporation, National Semiconductor Synopsis, General Motors, Google, Xerox, and not only that, he has also uh, fostered a lot of national collaborations, you know, in terms of international cooperation. Mo notable among them are Indo-German, Indo-US, Indo-Brazil, and Indo-Swiss collaborations. He is also a well-educator and mentor, and we fondly know him as PPC. He's also encouraged a lot of IIT graduates to take up research and uh, uh, including institution of awards for the students. His students are across departments and also work in different areas of research. He has also tremendously supported the activities which include micro UAVs, underwater and autonomous vehicles and robots. As a researcher and administrator, he led the development of key institutional initiatives at IIT Kharagpur in terms of setting up the Advanced VLSI Design Laboratory, the ATDC or the Advanced Technology Development Center, the Incubation and Entrepreneurship Program, the Technology Transfer and IPR initiatives. Uh, you must be also very proud that the last year under his uh, leadership, the Institute also won the National IP Award among the... <laughs> the other centers of uh, excellence were set up under his initiative, including the Innovation Center. And during the uh, stint, and as it continues, uh, he has also actively sought the uh, academic excellence in IIT. And today we are ranked under the top 100 of the world rankings by the different uh, organizations. Uh, particularly some national initiatives are something which IIT Kharagpur has participated under his leadership. I'd like to mention some of them. The National Digital Library, Gyan, National Ranking, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, Sandhi, Future of Cities, Imprint, Teachers 10KT, and several pan-IIT initiatives. Professor Chakravarti has also a lot of awards to his credit. They are quite a large number. I had mentioned only some of them. He, back in time, as I told you, was the Indian gold medal winner for the president uh, uh, gold medal winner in 1985. He is also an INSA Young Scientist Award. He's also been awarded in 1985 the Anil K. Bose Award the INE Young uh, Engineers Award, Swarna Jayanti Fellowship, which is a very coveted fellowship, and also the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award, and the INE Chair Professorship. These are only some of the ones that I've, been men I've mentioned so far. <laughs> he has, to his credit, uh, the fellowship with a lot of national academies. Some of them are, he's elected to, as a fellow to the INSA, the Indian Academy of Science, Bangalore, the Indian National Academy of Engineering, 
and also the West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology. So these are some of the uh, ones that I've mentioned to you. Uh, besides, I think uh, each of one, uh, as uh, faculty, as students, as staff of the institutes have very actively, some way or the other, interacted with, uh, with our director, fondly as he is known as PPC. I think uh, we've, many of us have also seen his non-academic face, a lot of outreach that he does to the campus activities, uh, untiring support to the entire institution and with a very pleasing demeanor, and that's PPC. Uh, I, I think whatever I said is much less. He's not only fostered our institution, he's also fostered IIT Patna under the lead, joint leadership of IIT Kharagpur and IIT Patna. So this is a very brief uh, uh, account of his achievements, uh, but as you interact with him, I think you will know more, uh, and, and there's a lot to actually uh, learn from his academic as well as his administrative capabilities. Thank you all once again. I would request as a token of uh, welcome, uh, I would request Nikita and uh, Uday Kiran to please come forward and give the floral welcome to Professor PPC. I would request Professor PPC to please come over to your guys. Please give him a big hand. Not only listen, but to think. This is about science and technology. This is about mathematics. You are here in a world and I would like to share with you a bigger picture. Where? Good, good, good. These questions and made materials which are of maybe of atoms and molecules but much of them and all of them combined form the world of ours. And if you have just read in recent times articles that have come out which have shown when your liver becomes or a mathematician or somebody will answer, it is going to require deep thought, deep understanding and deep realization of who you are and what the world is all about. Science and technology has been our modern day's tool to really comprehend all this. And among the sciences and the technologies very predominant among them is artificial in the sciences of the artificial or computer science and information technology. Computer science and information technology is actually the modern face of the industrial revolution. The industrial revolution which started many many years ago with the steam engine has now evolved and the form that we see today and the form that we are going to see a little while is that small little baby has just started crawling. That small little baby has started crawling and the amount of knowledge that we have produced is exponentially growing every year. Among the innovations, inventions, imaginations of the human being has been the development of this digital computer which consists of a simple concept of th three things. It has got a central, reads one memory element from memory 10, reads another from memory 11, adds memory 10 and 11, stores in 12, and prints 12. It just adds two numbers. This sort of language, which is the foundation 
of the CPU, which is called the machine language or the assembly language, is inherently this instruction set is inherently so powerful, has been found to be so powerful that with this people have started writing software. Software of read an integer and determine if it is a prime number, you know what is a prime number. So, all of you, many of you will know how to do this. You know what is a palindrome? One word which can be read from the front and the back at the same way. You will be able to read in an airline route and determine the shortest path time between two airports. Today, Google Maps will tell you where to go, what is the shortest path, how much time it takes to go through this route, that route, how much traffic is there. It is all available to even a lay person who may not know any of computer science. All of that has emanated out of programs written using, fundamentally using only those instruction sets. Though there has been a lot of evolution about how to write those programs. How would you place telephone poles in a city? A word processor, your word or any other word processing software, all of this you know adjusts it, corrects your spelling, starts doing so many things. You write programs in high level languages like C, basic, python and things like that. And how does that convert it, get converted to computing language? That is how does that get converted to machine language is also by another program. The operating system that you use, whether it is the Android, whether it is the Windows or whatever you use are all software. And all have come out of those 12 software that is written by human beings and software that is written in such a way that it starts evolving on its own like you adapt and evolve into any system, like a plant adapts and evolves into any system, these softwares have started becoming evolutionary in nature. Speech recognition, even my own students, I just went to Bangalore and saw that they are able to recognize on a mobile phone 10 Indian languages. And show it to you. So, this sort of what is today known as conversational AI, where you are actually conversing with a robo maybe, we are using these terms chatbots and stuff like that, but it is all about conversational intelligence. And the Turing's test says, that a machine is said to be intelligent if the person on, if a human being is unable to make out whether the response coming from the other side is a human being or a machine. But very soon with your heart, lung, hand, wrist, elbow all replaced, whether you are a human being or a machine or what, you will also find it difficult to decipher. Language recognition. This is the heart of AI. <clears throat> if one can recognize, see today our communication is through language. Language has been developed by the human race, by the animal race, by all races. Are you aware that penguins communicate, rats communicate, all of them have their own language of communication. But the written language language of grammar, language of all this and at the heart of, of all automation is the theory of understanding of natural language. The ability to understand natural language is the holy grail of whether you call it computer science or AI or whatever. Are you aware that 
Fermat's last theorem and after that few other mathematical laws were proved only by computers. There is one proof which no one was able to do. It is probably a one million page proof done automatically by a computer. New laws of mathematics are being evolved and understood. New principles are being founded. New proofs are coming out automatically. The human race which has developed this phenomenon of computer science is faced with the challenge of even knowing what it is all about and what its capabilities are. Drug discovery, everything else is going on. And amidst all this, we are given to understand that probably the computer can solve every problem on earth. Now, whenever you have something extremely powerful and computers are such like human beings can start asking questions, who am I? Computers can also be posed the question, who are you? What can you do? And once you pose such questions to a computer, this is where it reaches those realms where you begin to differentiate between what is artificial and what is the ability of a human being. The first problem that all of those who have done computing and the most terrible problem that all of us have faced while writing a program is that a program goes into an infinite loop and then except for control all del or switch off the we will stop with no by printing no if p goes into an infinite loop. So let us assume that this is the problem this is the program M that I am supposed to write. The question is why could nobody write a program like this? <clears throat> the argument is as follows. Suppose I could write a program like this. That means suppose such a program exists. If such a program exists then you will give me that program. Then I will write another program m dashed by modifying the program m that you or anybody else has written. What will I do? Wherever there is a print yes, for those who know C language I will write while semicolon. What does while semicolon do? Takes it to an infinite loop. So wherever the program is supposed to print yes, just the statement before that, I will make the program go into an infinite loop. And wherever the program is printing no, that means here, there just before it, I will say stop. That means I will say exit. Which means what have I done? If a program m exists, then I will write another program m dash out of m which does the following. m dash will now loop if m stops, right? Are you all with me? And m dash will stop if m loops, if p loops. Anybody who could not follow up to this step, please raise your hand. Okay. So, there is a program m which performs up to this. Are you okay up to this point? This program M will have some places where it prints yes. 
just before it prints yes, I will make it go into an infinite loop by writing another piece of code. A piece of code that I can just say for I semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. It will just go into an infinite loop. If I do that, then this part m stops with yes if p stops becomes m dash loops if p loops if p stops, correct? And wherever the program was printing no, just before that I will write go to exit, which means that wherever it was stop with no if p loops, it will simply stop without printing anything. Are you now okay with me? So if if somebody could solve this problem, m would exist, then from m, m dash would be derived. Now is this first part of the argument. Computers are so powerful that they can be asked questions about themselves. So I will replace p with I will replace p with m dashed. And what happens? What happens to the functionality of m dashed? m dash loops if m dash stops, m dash stops if m dash loops. Which means this is a contradiction. It works for all program, for, takes any program p. Yeah, so I will give m dash m dash, I will give m dash, m dash has got an executable, so I will give the source code of m dash to m dash. I will ask you who are you, can you do this? If I ask you next year, will you clear JE, you know no, but that is fine. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This is a contradiction. This means m dash does not exist. This means m dash does not exist, which also means that m does not exist. That means very important, you cannot, you cannot write a program. Nobody in this world can ever write a program that will solve the halting problem. This is very important to realize that the computer programs can be written for so many things, but cannot be written for this. So maybe there is only one problem in the world which computers cannot solve. So let us look at it in another way. Let us make a list of all programs in the world. We can sort the programs lexicographically like a dictionary and make a list. And let us make a list of all inputs to all the programs. And for the time being, we will assume these programs give only yes and no output. There are other programs, but for the time being, we will restrict ourselves to programs that can give only yes and no output. So suppose p1 on x1 gives yes, no, yes, etc., etc. So this is an infinite by infinite table. One infinity by another infinity table. And suppose these are, these are the outputs of these programs, which means this table is the list of all problems that can be solved. This table is the conceptual list of all problems that can be solved. Now look at a problem whose output is supposed to be no on x1, no on x2, yes on x3, no yes on x4, no on x5 and so on. What is unique about this new input? It has a mismatch with P1 in X1, it has a mismatch with P2 in X2, it has a mismatch with P3 in X3, it has a mismatch with P4 in X4, 
it has a mismatch with p5 in x5. For every pi and every xi, it will have a mismatch at that location, which means that this row does not exist in this table, which means that this problem is not listed in this table, which means this is an unsolvable problem, because this is not part of the set of all problems that can be solved. The second thing I do is, I now this is only one input I created. If I do a permutation of this and I create another input like this, I will get another input. And for every permutation I do of this, I will get a new input like this. So, now I have started getting more than one. How many are there? As many permutations of the list of integers. You all have done lot of mathematics problems. What is the per, what is the set of permutations of the set of integers? The set of permutations of the set of integers. You know it. Take any real number, it is 0 point some number. So, every real number is a permutation of the set of integers, right? Every real number is a permutation of the set of integers, and the set of real numbers is larger or smaller or equal to the set of integers? Larger. Though they are both infinity, the set of real numbers is a larger infinity than the set of integers and there are larger infinities than the set of real numbers and for every infinity that you give me there is a larger infinity to that. These are important things to understand. These are important things not just as a mathematical entity for you. Realize that this world has got that many infinities. Realize that this world has got that many infinities. I am showing it to you mathematically, we can show it to you philosophically, we can show it to you in physics, we can show it to you through chemistry. I am taking this route to just show it to you. Therefore, the ratio of the unsolvable versus the solvable problems is the ratio of the reals to the integers that many unsolvable problems are there for a digital computer which can do so many things and which is potentially supposed to change the face of humanity. Now, when you bring in time, energy, bandwidth and all other constraints, then more constraints come out into our ability to solve a problem. That is why a supercomputer requires so much energy and what is done in a supercomputing device today cannot be done on a mobile phone. That is why we are not able to have unlimited, unburdened communication between any two people in the world through because of limitations, limitations of time, of space, of bandwidth, of energy and there are laws. There are laws in computer science which are equivalent to the space time law in physics. And all these are, are absolutely interesting, but what I wanted to tell you is that when real computers are built. So, you end up with problems which are not only solvable, but are tractable. That means, they can be solved in reasonable time. Suppose I ask you to 
you know these stories of uh, the have you heard of this the tower of brahma those three towers and 64 pegs and you have to move one peg at a time read it the tower of brahma is also known you know we have lost our pride of all these problems which were discovered in ancient india and so it is now called the tower of hanoi in all the textbooks <clears throat> if one move takes a day why is it called the tower of brahma the problem to solve the problem if one move takes a day then the total number of moves that is required to solve that problem is approximately the size of the universe a time for the time of the universe so it is called one brahma every day moves one such tile and at the end of the kalpa all the things are moved and a new world is created so there are intractable problems that require exponential time and resource and all the problems that we see are solved either being tractable problems or are approximately solved because they are intractable problems so some tractable problems i have listed for you and some intractable problems i have listed for you of which this is at the heart of cryptography the heart of cryptography is about factorization of large numbers and once factorization of large numbers becomes easy if it does become easy at any point in time and tractable at any point in time then the current theory technique mechanism of all of encryption will collapse so computing is built around tractable problems as well as intractable problems and human beings today have the ability to not only solve tractable problems but are finding ways and means to solve intractable problems in a manner that looks like a reasonable solution energy environment etc all of them are actually very serious problems for the for it today are you aware that for the latest data center google has had to to manufacture a power plant just to run its data center next to it it has created a power plant are you aware that all we talk about digital technologies today electronic waste and e waste are going to be the biggest hazards for all of us there is so much of rare earth material there is so much of the such material that it is going to contaminate almost everything that we see the conquests have been big more and more trillion chips trillion transistors are in one small tiny wafer today trillion you must have seen in the internet pictures of the first computer which is one big room as big as this which can do even much less than what your phone can do parallel and distributed computing optical wireless communication internet is your everything right imagine what this internet is for the history of civilization it contains truth it contains untruth it contains so many things and the most important thing that is hitting each one of us every day is how artificial intelligence intelligent software intelligence of human beings embedded into that mechanism is taking us through 
So what is artificial intelligence? The artificial intelligence and its difference between other programs, a program, uh, the difference between artificial intelligence and a program is dif the difference between uh, the switchboard and a computer. The switchboard is designed to, it has got options, this on, this off, this on, this off, but it only does lights. Whereas a computer can solve problems. Artificial intelligence is like that. A normal program is written to solve a particular problem. AI programs are written to take the problem as statement as the input. Assume that you had an artificial intelligence mechanism with you when you gave JE exam, you know, like that. So, among the foundations of AI are few. One is the ability to rapidly explore an option, like chess. What will be my next move? The second is the ability to deduction, to do logical deduction. If this is true and that is true, then that must be. And the third is the ability to learn and adapt. Learn from everything that you do, successes and failures and adapt. And these are the three things that all of you do when you study. Explore, reason and learn, irrespective of the subject. That is why I have picked this subject with you, because I want you to take you into these philosophical questions through the medium of a subject that interests you. If I had taken it to you through another topic, then you would have thought that I am telling you about the Vedas or something else. So let's give you a simple idea of what deduction means. And I'm, I'm teaching AI actually nowadays to these, I think, third year or something. So all male are mortal. Rajat is a man. Prove that Rajat is mortal. So we write down for all x, man x implies mortal x. Man Rajat, mortal Rajat. And we prove that F1 and F2 implies Q is a tautology. That's all we do. You know tautology? So if I know A is true and B is true, and if A and B derive C, then A and B implies C must be a tautology. That's all there is to it. That is the fundamental way in which we start doing reasoning. And based on that, you know, you can write out the whole of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Father Dasarat Ram, Father Dasarat Lakshman, Bharat Chatrugna Ram, Love Ram Kush. Now you define an ancestor. X is an ancestor of Y. If X is the father of Y and there is somebody Z who is the father of X and Y is the ancestor of Z, then X is the ancestor of. Similarly, brother, X is the brother of Y if there exists some Z such that Z is the father of both of them. You should have added mother also, but uh, you know, as, a, as another rule or mother. ancestor and then you ask who is the ancestor of love you will get all these names ram dasarath who is the ancestor of kush etc etc you can actually write down the whole story that way and except for 
some intangible emotional issues where it is unknown what the answer will be. The rest is logical. <coughs> so, using all this, as of today, we have built these systems. These diagrams of these chips, this one, this one, this software, this one and this one. We have components in here, but each of this is made at IIT Kharagpur. That is why I have put these pictures there. These pictures are not taken out from anywhere else. This is an encryption chip, this is an RF communicating chip, this is the software that runs in power grid corporation, this is the autonomous underwater vehicle, this is our analysis of the car and we have some work done on the satellite, our ISRO satellite antennas. The way that we all are going to learn study, learn new things is dramatically changing because of AI and augmented reality. Reality as the first thing that I pointed out is going to get changed and is transforming and you will find it very difficult to realize what is reality. You think what you are seeing is real, but suppose your eyes could see atoms and molecules. Is not that real? Can you see it? But suppose you could see it, what would you see me as? Next to me is also atoms and molecules. Next to me is also atoms and molecules. You would see me connected completely and you would see, you would not see me at all because the gaps are more than the filled up places. So, what would you see? We think this is all reality. That is because our eyes show us something, our senses give us some feeling. But suppose your eyes could show you the complete atomic motion. Imagine what you would see in your mirror. You would not see the mirror. What is reflection? So, ask yourself, what you see, is it real? Is it because you are limited by what you can see? Do you see more by closing your eyes than opening your eyes? You ask all these questions and once you ask all these questions, it is then you will start asking deeper and more and more fundamental questions. Fundamental questions that have been asked from time immemorial, but have not been solved as well as we want it to be solved. But think, think that if I gave you gadgets to see much more things, if I gave you a gadget to see everybody's emotion. If I gave you something to see what is happening in everybody's mind and everybody could read everybody's mind. What is the mind by the way? So, many things are going to happen that are going to change the way we see and make the world. You are here to take those steps to make it happen. So, it is important for you to realize that science and technology is our vehicle for understanding and living in this world. So, the challenges are, the biggest challenge today is natural language understanding. The second is this complexity barrier. The third is interfacing with the real world. 
the fourth is energy, the fifth is bridging the gap between the molecular world and the world of bits and bytes. And the best, most important question that is being raised is do we think that there is a need for a different model of computing? What is the best known model that we think even this question should be asked by us. Are we a model of computing for somebody else or are we original? These questions sound funny, but these questions are real. So, the road ahead is full of horror stories. Today, the human being can become a machine, because all of us are getting used to that machine and we are losing our native abilities. Machines can become more intelligent than humans. We have seen all these Matrix movie, all these movies you must have seen, right? Matrix, all these AI, stuff like that. Selective discrimination. If Adolf Hitler had this capability, then he wouldn't have done all this for massacre of a race. Probably one of the most intelligent in the world at that time and even now. Perfected cloning, you will duplicate yourself and who will become who you won't know. An individual will have the ability to destroy the civilization. That is the possibility. The hope, if we do our act well, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, all those movies come back, right? My hero is Yoda. You remember Yoda? That little guy, the Jedi master. Yoda had, Yoda had a very interesting quote that I give all the time. When people tell me, sir, I will try to do this. Yoda had said, do or do not, there is no try. You remember when uh, that fellow was learning and he was trying to get up and he says, I cannot, I cannot do it. He was not able to lift something. He was trying to do training, Skywalker. This prince, which is the current face of the industrial revolution, is just crawling. You all will start making it walk. And you will have to choose whether you are on the dark side or with the force. You will have to make that choice every day, every moment. This choice will have to be made by you. And as the world becomes more and more complex, this choice will be made every second. Will I do it? Will I not do it? Will I do it? Will I not do it? The ability to make this correct choice typically distinguishes an IITM. We are not brought up in a certain way. Even in this institution, you will have many opportunities to choose. I mentioned that when, I, when we first met. So this is the larger issue. Which sciences have the greatest soul sought since time immemorial and they did not have with them the ability of modern science and technology, yet they pursued it. What was it? Which is the most sought after question in the history of mankind? I thought that before you embark from your Monday's rigmarole of doing things, 
and by the time you blink your eyes five times, your four years, five years will be over. And whether you will become a new human being or a machine, you will decide on yourself. It is important that I raise these to you, otherwise I will not have done my duty. Which is the most complex system known to us? That is what I talked about. This human being, which is connected to all the galactic worlds, materially, mentally, and through the consciousness, is connected to everything in this whole galactic world and beyond. So I will give you stories of two ancient students of India, two students which highlight what you are in for and what we are in for. The first is about curiosity that you have all come with and these institutions firm resolve not to discriminate anything for the purpose of learning. And the second student is the one who asks the fundamental question. You may have seen this. क्या बादल में क्या आकाश में बूंद फिर बादल में बूंद फिर जल में तो फिर मैं कहा से आता हूं मैं कहा जाता हूं कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा फिर आकाश से बातें कर रहा है काका नदी के दो तट हैं। तो क्या हमारा भी कोई दूसरा तट है पगला देगा तू मुझे ले पकड़ पत्तल का दोना हमारे लिए यही पहला और यही आखिरी सच है यही प्राण है यही ईश्वर है जल इसमें भी है आग इसमें भी है अगर यही प्राण और यही ईश्वर है तो फिर वो आकाश में भी है धरती में भी है अरे मैं तेरे हाथ जोड़ता हूँ तेरे पाँव पड़ता हूँ मुझसे ये सवाल न किया कर मैं पागल होना नहीं चाहता दिस इज सत्य काम Satyakam and his questions are the questions that you've asked from childhood. And the world is his kaka. This person was asked about father and mother. And since he came from an unknown place. He did not know anything about the quality of his father and mother. And yet, he had this urge. I am Satyakam Jabala. My name is Satyakam Jabal. Jabala? Who doesn't know your mother here? चल दूर हो जाए यहाँ से क्यों आचार्य के मार्ग को अपवित्र कर रहा है सत्यकाम जा यज्ञ की संविधा ले आ आज से तू मेरा शिष्य और मैं तेरा आचार्य आज से तू जवाला का पुत्र हरी द्रुमत गौतम के शिष्य के रूप में जाना जाएगा जा जल्दी जा तेरे उपनयन संस्कार के लिए यज्ञ की संविधा ले आ 
This induction program is exactly this. You are students of IIT irrespective of who you are. Just your abilities will count. The next is about another young person whose name you may have heard was called Nachiketa. And I will not take you through a long story, but he asked some questions to Yama, the god of death. But Yama is also the god of dharma. मरे हुए मनुष्यों के संबंध में कुछ लोग कहते हैं कि वे हैं और कुछ लोग कहते हैं कि वे नहीं हैं मैं उस सत्य को जानना चाहता हूं हे मृत्यु मैं उस रहस्य को जानना चाहता हूं जिसे न जानने के कारण मेरे निष्प्रिय और तपस्वी पिता भी मुंह के बंधन न काट सके क्या है जीवन की उपासना का वह रहस्य जिसे मनीषी आत्मविद्या कहते हैं हे अंतक ये सुख ये भोग कल रहेंगे या नहीं इसका भरोसा नहीं है भोग से इंद्रियों का तेज कम होता है इसलिए आपके ये घोड़े ये नाच ये गान आप अपने पास ही रहने दें नवित्तेन तर्पणियों मनुष्य मनुष्य के धन की प्यास कभी बुझने वाली नहीं इसलिए मुझे तो आप वही ज्ञान दें जिसे पाकर मनुष्य अमर हो जाता है मन... जल में बूंद मनुष्य के धन की प्यास कभी बुझने वाली नहीं प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस दिस आई वॉन्टेड टू शो यू दैट प्रॉबेबली इफ यू लुक डीप विद इन पील आउट ऑल द इनपुट्स दैट हैव बीन गिवन टू यू अबाउट वॉट टू डू इन लाइफ दिस विल कम बैक टू यू so there are three steps in indian language the first step is called tapasya or hard work the second is called swadhyay self assimilation if you don't learn something on your own if you don't learn something on your own and don't assimilate it on your own that learning is incomplete and the third is whatever is the truth is the truth that is the truth surrender to truth it may be hard for you it may look good to you don't try to camouflage it by thinking that no 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 this is not the truth then prove that this is not the truth and these three are the fundamental principles of yoga karma shu kaushalam which is the motto of our institution irrespective of what this institute does i will end with this poem of tagore which is translated from bengali to english those who know bengali what is it chitta jetha bhay shunno uchcha jetha sheet gyan jetha mukto jaha jetha so this is tagore's poem where the mind is without fear and the head is held high this is where i request you to keep your ambitions your goals and we look forward in the years to come that you will become those for whom we will be very proud of i will have little time you will have little time to listen to all this beyond the induction program that is why we set up this induction program so that before you get there you remember what your fundamental goals are thank you very much
Thank you. I've been asked to uh, give the vote of thanks. Questions? No questions. OK. <laughs> um, I would like to thank our director, Professor Chokravarti, who inspires us every day to think outside the box and to think big, and who tirelessly works to make the world better. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, our senior administrators, our deputy director, deans, and Professor Mundell for their leadership. And um, as you can imagine, there's a long list of people who made this happen. Um, this includes the folks at Gymkhana, the HMC, the audiovisual team, the CET team, the CCM team, the electrical team, um, the research scholars, and I'd actually especially like to thank all my colleagues, both faculty and staff, who burned the midnight oil to uh, make this induction program. And I'd also like to make a very special thank you to Professor Priyadarshi Patnayak and his sincere team of student volunteers who are, worked day in and day out all summer. And of course, to all of you for eagerly participating and being so delightful to meet.